Welcome, everybody, this week to the Directed IR podcast. I am just kind of the fifth wheel today because Matt Sorensen is the GOAT, the greatest of all time, on the topic of IRA LLCs. This guy cracked the code 15 years ago. I remember being in a conference room and I said, hey, I've been setting up these IRA LLCs and I just barely know what I'm doing. And Matt said, I'm going to own this. I'm going to own this topic. I'm going to write the best-selling book on this. He did, and then he did a second edition. And so today, I'm just along for the ride with Matt Sorensen on everyone out there, how to use an IRA LLC. Did you like that intro? Dang, I like that intro. Thank you. I, you need to come around me more often and, like, you know, introduce me when I come into the room with my kids or, you know, go on a date with my wife. <laughs> it's Friday night. Nice. So this yeah, guy, fr- you don't even know. He is. You know. Yeah. I'll meet Michelle in the kitchen tonight around 6 o'clock and say, you don't even know. You're going out with <laughs> the bad swords tonight. All right. I'm, I, I am available well, for hire. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so everybody, everybody needs get- a hype, man. Yeah, they need a hype, man. So everybody, let me just wrap it up the intro with this point. If you have an IRA, Roth, HSA, 401k, or solo 401k, ultimately you're going to want to invest it and have some control over how that investment occurs. The IRA LLC is a generic term, meaning an entity that can be owned by your retirement account and you can run out and play and make money. So today, Matt, we're going to break that down. It's not going to be that long of a podcast. It's going to be straight yeah. into the point. It's really not that hard of a topic. So when Matt, when people want to self-direct their retirement account, maybe I'll ask you this. What is the most common types of investments where an LLC, before we talk about how to do it, maybe like why? Why would an LLC make sense in certain situations? Well, for everyone self-directing, right, we're going to, we're not just buying a stock or mutual fund. We're going to go buy real estate, a note, invest in a private company. So these quote unquote alternative assets are what we're buying. So first I got to move my account from Fidelity or Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade over to a self-directed custodian, like our company directed IRA. And once you're there, you then you, now you have the option to say, all right, I can buy a rental property. I can buy a property and rehab it and flip it. I can do a private money loan on a long-term or short-term basis. I can invest in the XYZ fund that's buying an apartment building. These are all assets that you can own, but the LLC is something, and sometimes it's called a checkbook IRA. The LLC is something that works really well when you're going to need transactional stuff. There's a lot going on. There's deal-making that needs to happen. The rental property, the flip, you're buying property at auction. You're doing six-month short-term loans to other people flipping houses. There's a lot of stuff going back and forth, documents, paperwork, contractors, things like that. We love an LLC, and we'll get into it where that makes sense. But if you're like, Matt, I'm investing in the XYZ fund that's an LLC that's buying an apartment building. Should I set up an IRA LLC? No, you don't need it. And we'll get into why here. So think of it for like investments where you're more hands-on. You're more in the deal-making and the actual execution of that investment happening. Well, and I'm going to come at you a little differently and say it doesn't have to be that active of a deal it could be just a rental property yeah. or an airbnb yes. it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have to be fix and flip type level and it could be something where you're wanting to access the money to go do crypto um you need you want to set up certain types of accounts or ex- do a an exchange or some sort of wallet that's really yeah. challenging and so those that are in the metaverse or crypto industry find the llc to be helpful I like the notes, you know, story because you're negotiating notes, maybe p- collaborating with someone on a non-performing note. Okay, yeah, so I found a reason why I need an LLC. I need more yeah. control. I'm sick of calling directed IRA or my custodian and having them walk me through their headaches. Before we go to the how, I want to say and ask, I'm going to ask, is it okay? Because there's certain big custodians out there, trust companies that say you can't have an IRA LLC. Are they full of crap? Is it really true? What do they know that we don't? <laughs> they know that they like your money in their bank account. That's what they know. Because um, mm-hmm. what happens with IRA custodians is when you're not investing money and it sits in their bank account, they make money. I mean, we do that too, but all the IRA custodians make money doing that. And so if they let you set up an LLC, they know that that money's leaving from them and going into a business checking account at some other bank that they're not making money on. And so a lot of the companies in the industry will restrict it simply because of that. Now, they're not going to tell you that, but that's a primary incentive. 
Another crowd of the self-directed custodians that won't let you do the IRLC, they just decided 20 years ago when the laws weren't as clear and there weren't 20 cases on it and there weren't IRS you know, advisory stuff on it, and they just have never changed since. It's been their policy. They've just stuck to a business model that doesn't allow it, and they just haven't gotten with the times. But guys, like I have my chapter in my book on it. There's like 20 citations in it. I just wrote an article a few weeks ago in, to, in the California Lawyers Association Business Section Bulletin on IRA LLCs. This is like a peer-reviewed bulletin that goes out to all business lawyers in California about how the IRA LLC works and how what lawyers need to make sure in the documents to, make, to have it done right. So this is a tried-and-true strategy. It's a legit strategy. Don't get freaked out by people saying it's illegal or something like that. Look past that, look into the details, and, um, and we have a lot of those resources. So, like, if you go to my website or directedira.com, we have these articles, we have these citations. My book's got this stuff that'll make you feel good about it if you're a little concerned. But also, in our law firm, KQS Lawyers, where we actually set these LLCs up, we give you an opinion letter about it and say, this was set up in compliance with the rules for retirement accounts. As long as you operate it properly, and we tell you how to do that, and we'll talk about it here, as long as you operate it properly, you're good. Don't worry. Yeah. And, and by the way, we're not talking thousands and thousands of dollars uh, to have an IRA LLC structure and consultation with a lawyer is maybe just a few hundred dollars more than a regular LLC. It's not that expensive. Mm -hmm. So don't think we're there. There's some shock kind of becoming now, rather than just interview Matt, let me add something that I like that Matt just said, as long as you follow the rules. So we're going to get to the how to here in just a moment. So we know why you might do it. We know it's okay. But let me just hit a couple important foundational rules. By doing an IRA LLC doesn't mean that now you get to have, you know, unfettered access to this money for your own playground to play, you know, do whatever you want. You're still going to follow the prohibited transaction rules. This LLC cannot pay you to be the manager. You can be the manager and make decisions and write checks, but it cannot compensate you. You cannot compensate your spouse, your kids, your parents, all the same prohibited parties of uh, apply. And this LLC could not buy a rental property for your kids to live in or for you to go play around in Hawaii in. All the <clears throat> same rules of prohibited transactions apply. The LLC doesn't get around those. The LLC is to make your life easier so that you can run with the checkbook, make decisions, make calls, write checks, and go. And you do have quite a bit of latitude to be the manager of the operation or the LLC will give you in that opinion letter the rules. So it's it, so again, it's it's not that tough and they're very affordable. They work. They've they're tried, true and tested. Now I want to set one up, Matt. Where should I start? Yeah. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is you need the self-directed IRA because an IRA LLC is two pieces. It's an IRA and an LLC. So you got to get your IRA account or your old 401k to a self-directed provider. We got lots of episodes on how to roll and move your money over. But let's say you're at a self-directed IRA provider or like directed IRA. Now, hold on. I want to add this before everybody, when Matt says get it to an IRA, you could do this with a health savings account, mm. a Coverdell, yeah. a Roth, a traditional, a 401k, a solo 401k. We have all those platforms. When you go to directedira.com and say open an account, there's like 15 choices. So we're just using the generic term IRA. So what Matt says is get whatever money that you want to direct mm -hmm. in whichever of those cool accounts yeah, that are yeah. tax preferred, get the money there first. Whether it's a new solo K, we can help you with that. It's a new 401k, it's a rollover, it's a transfer. I had this old 503, 516, 18B, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> get it here. And we have a helpline <laughs> at directedira.com where they can help you get the right account. So that's that's what you're saying. Is I've kind of made it a little more broad. Yeah. But that's step one. Get the freaking money here. Yeah, and when I'm saying IRA here, I'm just meaning generically whatever self-directed account you have. This could be an HSA LLC, a covered LLC, a solo K LLC. Okay, we're just using IRA generically here, so appreciate you clarifying that. Thanks. Okay, so the step two of this is an LLC. Now, why do I want the LLC? There's a couple reasons we like the LLC. One, that LLC is going to have a bank account. The LLC is going to have a bank checking account that the IRA is going to invest its money in. So rather than my IRA owning real estate directly, being on title to it, getting the income, tell my IRA custodian to pay the expenses, making sure the money's going into the IRA account, and all that back and forth, for example, on a piece of real estate, now my IRA owns an LLC, 
The LLC is going to own the property. The LLC is on the deed and on the contract of the property. The LLC gets the income. The LLC pays the expenses. I want to buy another property from the cash flow. The LLC goes and buys the next property. Okay, Everything's happening at the LLC level, and you're manager of the LLC. You don't own the LLC. Your IRA owns it 100%, but you're the manager of it. It's like manager of an LLC is like president of the corporation. So manager of the LLC, you get to sign on stuff, make decisions. You're going to have access to this LLC's bank checking account. You can have a debit card associated with it. You're obviously cutting checks or sending wires to buy and sell assets. But it puts you in this checkbook control, quote, unquote, there. <laughs> a lot of people like to call it where you have authority to move the money and, and buy stuff and pay expenses and pay the contractor and enter into a deal, sign a contract tomorrow, you know, buy a property at auction on the courthouse steps. Like This gives you that control and flexibility that a lot of our quote-unquote deal-making clients here, I don't know why I keep doing air quotes here, but you know what I mean? <laughs> our deal-making <laughs> clients like to have that. You know, They're entrepreneurial, they're investors, they love that control, and that LLC gives you that. Okay, I freaking love it. And without uh, wasting time here trying to say it in a different way, let me point out that many of you may have started to have a lot of questions. Well, can I have multiple people in this LLC? Yes. Could if, if it's a single member LLC or even multiple, could we do additional contributions down the road from a retirement account into the same LLC? You could. There's a way to do that. It can be complicated. Depends. The more people you have as partners, the more complicated you mm-hmm. can get. What does this, does this LLC have to do with tax return? Does it da, 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 da. Well, these types of little nuances are what you're going to talk about with the attorney when you set up the LLC and you're going to get a set of a, kind of a rule book, this opinion letter of things you can and cannot yeah. do. We have prior podcasts on this. We teach this in our classes twice a year at our summits. So you're going to need to get some training on this and it's okay you're the captain of the ship you're the manager of the llc it just doesn't mysteriously pop out of midair and there are going to be questions you know so um this step two of getting the bank account going is a big part of this and then these other little questions start to come up but that's okay don't worry about it just know that Mm -hmm. the law firm is a key piece in this and if you don't like our law firm fine but I'll tell you right now, you go to any custodian out there trying to get an IRA LLC, the ones that allow them even, they're going to want to see a lawyer prepare these documents. Legal Zoom docs don't cut it. There's perver- provisions that need to be yeah. in the LLC, and so just keep that in mind. All right, so you yeah, said a, bank account. That was a great point, Sorry. though, about the documents. They are a little unique in IRA LLC. So if you're like, well, I already have an LLC, Matt. Can I just use that? No. Because you own that LLC, and i got to move that ownership from you personally to your IRA. That's called a prohibited transaction. So this is a new LLC being set up. It's got specific provisions in it that every IRA custodian that allows it, and there's probably 20-plus self-directed IRA custodians. I'd say 15 of the 20 allow it. There's the five old school ones that can't get over it that don't do it. But the majority of them will allow it, but they're going to have a checklist that says, did you do it this? Did the articles done this way? Was this in the operating agreement? Was this done on the EIN properly? They're going to go through this list before they'll fund it. And if you did it wrong, it's going to get rejected, and you're going to have to go back and start over. So, And and a lot of people are always in a hurry getting this set up. So make sure you get it done with a lawyer who does it right. We can obviously take care of you at KKOS Lawyers and make it all coordinated when you're using directed IRA. Now, a couple things I want to say because once you have that checking, checking account, you know, sure, you can make additional contributions. You send it to your IRA or HSA, whatever the account is, and then invest it from there into the LLC but you never take money from the LLC. This is a really important point. When you have an IRA LLC, you don't own the LLC. The IRA does. You can never cut yourself a check. Even if you're like, well, I'm 59 and a half. I want to start taking money out. You don't own the LLC. The IRA does. You send money from the LLC back to the IRA. Then you take a distribution from the IRA. Also, you don't take money. The LLC as a salary or a compensation. There's cases on that where there's a case, Ellis versus commissioner. Guy had an IRA LLC was taking a salary of 30 grand a year, got audited. IRS claimed a prohibited transaction. He disputed it. He lost in tax court. He appealed it in the U.S. Court of Appeals, lost again. We've always told our clients, even before that case, you can't do it. Now there's a clear-cut case. No, you really can't do it. So don't get <laughs> greedy and take a salary out of this thing. I love it, Matt. I would, was going to interject there on that um, first point of the money. Um, that's a cool thing. Uh, because what can happen is you could run this LLC for five or 10 years. 
Let it just grow. Have make little baby rabbits. Have more rabbits. Let the SLLC grow. <laughs> you don't if, until you want money. You don't have to send money back to the IRA. So just let this LLC grow and flourish and snowball and grow in value. Oh, someday you want to sell everything or send back a hundred grand? Great. Send it to the IRA. Then the IRA gives it to you. If it's a Roth, better yet, it could be a solo K. You're going to borrow from that. I mean, there's so it could be a health savings account. You're going to pull some money out for medical. So any of these tax preferred vehicles are the ones doing business in the LLC, not you. So in the LLC, you want to kick out money, do it. You can take all the time in the world. Um, well, yeah. Matt, how much does the, do these cost? Or in, how long do they take to yeah, set so up generally? Yeah. Yeah, so at Directed IRA, the fee's nine ninety five. If you're using KQS Lawyers, you know, you get a discount here. So the your account fee's three ninety five. Then the the fee for the IRA LLC setup for the law firm is nine ninety five. If you're using other custodians, it's twelve hundred bucks. It's a little bit more. <laughs> but we discount it when it's coordinated here between our law firm and, and our IRA company. So because it um, saves us time and it saves you people yes. time. Yeah. Yes, if you want to go to another law firm, good luck. If you want to go to another custodian, good luck. You got to play matchmaker. You come here, you get your custodian account, four hundred dollars, very competitive. And number two, you get an LLC for a grand. So you're off to the races with a single member LLC. What if Yeah. And if you have the single member LLC, for most of you, there's not much you gotta do. You know, you just gotta keep the LLC active with the state. If you're in California, you do have to pay your eight hundred bucks, but otherwise your LLC, you're just keeping it active. There's no tax return to the IRS because it's a single member LLC or disregarded. Now, if you're doing a multi member or you've got multiple IRAs or individuals as partners in an LLC, which you can do, and we have a prior podcast episode on the multi member IRA LLC, go back and watch that. If you're doing that, you will have a partnership tax return that's a little more you know, costly to maintain just because you got to do some partnership tax returns. But the single member is pretty easy. You just got to pay your annual account fee for your IRA. And then you might have an annual fee with your state to keep your LLC active. Well, wow. I'm trying to think if there isn't something we haven't talked about. It, they're really, let's see, we got the why mm -hmm. and generally the how. Uh, we've talked about some uh, rules that go with it. And yeah. they're when true and tied, try, who can use it. Um, maybe give us a fun example. Let's do a fun yeah. example. Let's get let's get some feels out there. We've had clients that have been quite successful to this. Maybe some of our <clears throat> John Shikarchi, he he spoke at our last summit mm -hmm. in uh, yeah. uh, Phoenix. It was just fantastic. Um, I don't know, maybe him a, or someone. I'll give else. some examples. I'll just give some kind of cool ones and some basic ones. I use an IRA LLC, guys. Okay. I sit at the computer and I can push the buttons to send the money around. For my account, too, just like everyone else's. I use an IRA LLC. Why? Because I own a rental property. Now I'm doing private money lending out of my account. But when I bought the rental, I just wanted to own it in the LLC. It's easier for the title company. It was easy. I even had a property manager. It was easier to get the rental income and just pay expenses. I actually opened up a wallet to invest in crypto out of my IRA LLC. So I was buying crypto with my cash flow coming in. By the way, I did that, and there's a video. <laughs> you can see it's from 2017 <laughs> where I was talking about buying Bitcoin for 2500 bucks and how this is crazy, but I'm just trying it. Um, <laughs> and you can do it with an IRA LLC, you know? So I was talking about it back then. So, But it gives you the ability to just kind of more easily do some of those assets, reinvest and deploy the money um, uh, by using the LLC. You know, like John Shikarchi, who spoke at our self-directed IRA summit, he does all this short-term private money lending. You know, he might have 20 loans going at any given time out to just – different people flipping houses or real estate developers or other people where he's a private money lender with his retirement account. And having 20 loans going at a time, it's so much easier to just have an LLC rather than having to go back and forth with your custodian and the paperwork and the process and did that money get sent? Did the wire go? It's easier to just get that quote unquote check with control in the LLC. I know you've used it, Mark, right? You've even done yeah. cows. Yeah, I have. I've done several things. I thought you were going to throw down some numbers. You know, what makes the story as exciting, you say, <laughs> and I made millions. You can't, you can't yeah. say that. Um, Hundreds of thousands. I, I didn't do millions on that, but, you know. Yeah. yeah, and, well, and the beauty of this, people, is that you're investing in what you know. And nine times out of ten, you're going to get a better rate of return than just letting it sit at TD Ameritrade and just hope it works out. So now you're investing in your brother-in-law's restaurant down the street, your friend's landscaping company. It could be, again, real estate or notes. You're out there really 
deploying money in your community or with the people that you trust in small businesses or investments that you're very familiar with. You're buying a piece of land that you know is going to be subdivided down or a, a freeway is going to go by in two years. And you're like, I'm going to buy that land. We have clients that all they do is buy raw land in their retirement accounts and their mm-hmm. LLCs and wait for development and sprawl to reach them. And then they sell their land 3X or, or more. So I took an LLC and one of the first <laughs> I did was uh, my, one of my first IRA LLCs I think was in a crypto mine. So and we're still running that crypto mine today. So we bought three, I think we're up to five video cards and we're still mining Bitcoin and it's still there and growing. And uh, some may have given up on crypto industry altogether. I still know that uh, digital currency is going to be around and Bitcoin's the mainstay there. And I, b- I believe in that. Um, others have their opinions. Number two, I took my IRA LLC and we invested in some cattle here up in Idaho. It was after, of course, Yellowstone and the Dutton family. So uh, we formed a little LLC named the Kohler Dutton Livestock Company. And those that have been followers of the show have heard some of my antics with that. Um, We've flipped some vehicles. Uh, We bought some F-150s and then turned around and resold those. Uh, You can use third-party auto body shops and repair shops and to get a vehicle tuned up and flipped and that's okay. You can flip vehicles like you flip real estate and do it in your IRA. We've seen clients go um, buy video uh, and lighting and audio equipment, put them in uh, trailers and lease the trailers to production companies all over West and East Hollywood. Uh, They're at the production sites leasing equipment from their IRA so the list goes on and on. Clients that have bought racehorses, uh, all these sorts yeah. of things. So the LLC is really allows you to do some unique investments, a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it just puts you in that control. There's also a little bit of asset protection benefit too, right? If there's a lawsuit or something that happens on a property, particularly those that are flipping properties, they got to sue the LLC. They can't sue you personally. They can't sue the IRA. And a lot of times if you're just investing your IRA into an asset, like let's say your IRA owns a property you're flipping and something goes wrong on that flip well who are they going to go after who's the responsible decision maker on the ira you and your ira does not have asset protection from its own investment you become liable for it and responsible let's say there's something that happened and you were negligent on the flip and whatever happened well that can go on you personally so with the llc you get the limited liability company protection so there's some asset protection benefits too on the llc don't forget that well, I love it. So we hit some examples, and um, I just yeah want to. I just I just can tell what people th- where there's more resources on it. So if like yeah, what we what I would say is like we do have other podcasts on this, particularly if you want to learn how to partner and do multiple IRAs in an LLC. There's a multi-member IRA LLC podcast episode. There's a chapter in my book, the Self-Directed IRA Handbook. All right, here oh, there <laughs> on we the go. multi-member <laughs> IRA LLC, we got it on this, the regular IRA LLC. Um, I've got that article, like I said, we'll put here in the show notes on the California Lawyers Association business law section that I wrote on IRA LLCs. It's coming from a legit professional organization. Um, so we've got a lot out there. We just wanted to flesh this out. It's a very common strategy used by our self-directed investors. Like I said, particularly the deal makers, real estate clients, crypto just gives you a little more control and ability to pull off some of these transactions uh, by using the LLC. So um, now I want to give one last little plug. we got coming up on the Alt Asset Summit. That's June 29th and 30th. If you want to learn about what you can invest your self-directed IRA in, your personal funds, you've got an IRA LLC, come to the Alt Asset Summit. We're going to be going over investment options from single family to commercial to multifamily to private equity to venture capital, angel investing, uh, oil and gas, like we've got all these topics culminating at the Alt Asset Summit. Go to altassetsummit.com. You can register. It's June 29th and 30th in Costa Mesa. Love it. Well, everybody, the beauty of this, the message of the show is you're free. You are free to invest <laughs> in what you know best. And the IRA LLC gives you that freedom to write the check and freaking make things happen. So <laughs> if you're kind of that person that wants to take charge and better invest your retirement accounts. This maybe was a very liberating 
podcast to uh, discover. Please share it with your friends, your family. Give us a five-star rating. Uh, check, you out, check us out at the altassetsummit.com. And if you want to open an account within minutes, you can even do it mm-hmm. on your phone. Get over to directedira.com. Get those accounts opened. I love to fund the accounts of my kids, my grandkids. This is a family affair. You don't have to have millions to do this. And I know some of you do, and that's great. You've got more options, but you can still plant the seed. You can teach your family about saving. You can teach them about investing and do it together and do it as a family and friends. Lots of fun. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. 